There are some legitimate criticisms that you could levy against the jiu-jitsu belt system, but even though it's not perfect, it's essential for gatekeeping. And here's the thing, when you hear gatekeeping, sometimes people attach a negative connotation to it. I don't see it that way at all. We want to make sure that certain cultural elements of jiu-jitsu stay intact. We want the meritocratic element of jiu-jitsu to stay intact. We want to make sure that we're also training people that can use their skill sets responsibly and don't have a negative cloud of toxicity that they bring into the school and spread around to the other students. So gatekeeping can be an important thing. You, you can think of, if you look at it just from a single jujitsu school's perspective, it's like a garden, okay? You wouldn't, you wouldn't let a fox into your garden. You wouldn't let a fox into your hen house, right? You wouldn't have some outside force come in and disrupt the harmony of the culture that you have in your school. You would gatekeep, you would kick them out. You would not let them train. So it's the same kind of thing with the belt system. We gatekeep the meritocracy of it by keeping it intact. And even, even though every school has a different perspective on what each rank entails, the general culture can, and especially because we have high-level competitive jiu-jitsu, we can keep each other accountable. Everybody pretty much knows what a blue belt is. Everybody has some idea of what a purple belt is. And you should not have a purple belt from one school getting dominated by the white belts from another school. Something has gone wrong should that happen. So if that's the case, then we know that that purple belt is probably not really a purple belt. If they go into another school and the white belts from the other school are dominating that purple belt. So in that sense, we have the element of cross-training, inter-school competition, and the general cultural attitude of not over-promoting people and it being a bad thing to keep everybody in check. And I think that's a much better solution than having a centralized solution where everyone is under one umbrella organization that determines promotions. I think that's quite silly. Um, it entrenches certain attitudes that are not conducive to growing the martial art and attracting new people to come in. And, you know, people doing things differently can be a very good thing. You would expect very different things if you went to a 10th Planet school versus a more traditional gi-oriented school. And that doesn't mean that one side is better than the other. They have different characteristics, some of which are good. Some sort of traditionalism that exists in the jiu-jitsu cultural space is good. You do want to have some traditions that have been maintained to continue to be maintained because they're useful. The bell system being one of those traditions. At the same time, you want to have people in the space that are more open-minded and willing to take in new information, new strategies, new ways of doing things because should that school be successful with implementing, implementing those new things, then that is going to spread to the wider culture and that's going to improve the wider culture. So we have a good decentralized gatekeeping with the bell system. We can keep each other accountable. Everybody that is a legitimate practitioner of jiu-jitsu knows that attendance cards being the only requirement for promotions is a silly, stupid, nonsense idea. Uh, and at the same time, we know that there are certain expectations for each belt rank. Now, each school is different. Some purple belts are going to be much better coming from some schools than other purple belts. But even the purple belts that are more average as compared to like the elite schools, you would expect those average purple belts to absolutely dominate any white belt that they came against, assuming they didn't have prior jiu-jitsu training or wrestling training or any grappling training, you know. I'm not talking about that XD1 guy that just started a couple months ago and is a white belt, okay? That's not the same thing. That purple belt is probably going to have a lot of trouble with that person. But it's a very useful way to keeping each other accountable, okay? And the, the, you know, the trolls out there that everyone sometimes says go too far, I don't usually agree with that when they call out stupid promotional standards. I think it's a very good thing that we should do. I think charging thousands of dollars for belt promotions or, hundred, or even hundreds of dollars is very stupid. I think that when you have purple belts that can't do basic movements um, and they've got promoted just because they maintained a certain attendance level or maybe they sucked up to the instructor, that's a bad thing. And the overall interconnected school system 
when it comes to competitions, when it comes to cross training, can help keep that person accountable and can help keep the instructor that promoted that person accountable because they'll be shamed. And that's not always a bad thing. You want to shame people that are doing things incorrectly, that are doing things dangerously, and people that are undermining the cultural elements of jiu-jitsu that make it great. So, um, again, the most important thing that we want to preserve in jiu-jitsu is, is, is its culture of meritocracy. Because should we have any other criteria when it comes to promotions, when it comes to determining what makes a school good. Um, and there are other things, obviously, that we want to take into account. We want to take into account the overall school culture, the positivity of it, uh, etc. But when it comes to actual teaching of practical skill, it's important that we keep that meritocratic element to it because it's going to help the martial art maintain its legitimacy, maintain its growth, and its cultural influence in the rest of American culture or global culture. We want to make sure that we reinstill meritocracy because when you get rid of it, very bad things happen. I think we can all agree that we want the people in high stakes fields like doctors, surgeons, you know, engineers to be highly competent and have a strict meritocratic standard when it comes to choosing who gets to fill what role because disaster results should you use any other criteria. And jujitsu is a great way to showcase that on a much smaller scale and a scale that ultimately has less consequences, okay? Obviously, there's a lot fewer consequences to promoting a purple belt, a brown belt, when they're definitely not ready, than there is to promoting a doctor or surgeon into a certain field when they're not ready. It's life or death versus just, well, that person sucks at jujitsu and they don't deserve their rank. But the cultural element of meritocracy that we have in jujitsu can spread into other areas of life and society. So we want to make sure that we do that, and we want to make sure that the non-meritocratic non elements of society don't poison the culture of jiu-jitsu. We want the opposite to happen. We want the culture of jiu-jitsu to infect the rest of the country, the rest of society, the rest of culture, because it has some very valuable lessons to teach us. So thanks for watching, guys. I know this is a little bit off topic to what I normally do, but I think it's an important conversation to have. If you agree, make sure you share this video. Make sure you drop a comment. Even if you disagree, drop a comment. We'll have a dialogue. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you're new, and also check us out on Rumble, which is a censorship-free streaming flat platform, unlike YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.